So, wanted to finish up multiplication today. And I mean, you've probably, actually, there is something here that might be new to you. Could you shut that door, please, Rose? I don't know if, uh, if most of us see a lattice multiplication. But let's say we want to multiply two numbers, 12 times 4. And maybe we cannot do that in our head. So we set this up to be a line, these just like addition. So we've got a ones place. and a tens face. And now, unlike addition, if for addition, you'd be adding down like that. For multiplication, you multiply across. Four times two is eight. Four times one is four. And I, you carry just like you do with addition. So let's look at a bigger number, 12 times seven. Again, this is the ones, this is the tens. Seven times two is 14. But in the decimal system, you're not allowed to have 14 ones. You can only have between zero and nine ones. So we break it apart. Okay, so 14 is one to 10. And it's four ones. So we've only got a four in the ones place, but now we have a new 10, an extra one in the 10 place. Then we multiply seven, but we have this extra one. So instead of seven, we write down eight. And again, just to drive home what's happening here, say we have one, two, seven times eight. Eight times seven is 56. Eight times two is 16 plus five is 21, eight times one is eight, plus two is 10. You probably wouldn't, I mean, a kid might be confused if you wrote it this way, but what 127 is, it's 100 and it's 20, and it's seven. So the reason multiplication works is that multiplication distributes over addition. Eight times 100 plus 20 plus seven is eight times 100 plus eight times 20 plus eight times seven. So what this algorithm is actually doing is precisely that. You start by multiplying eight and seven, and you get 56. But we can't have 56 ones 
we can only have six ones, and then the 50 goes up here. Then eight times 20, let's see, 160, But we've also got a 50, so this is 200, so we have a 1 in the tens place, but we have a 200 over there now. 8 times 100 is 800, plus 1, so we have Ten hundreds, one thousand and sixty, and probably the quirk of this algorithm. Well, quirk's a weird way to put it, but the thing to be aware of. What if we want to multiply, say, two two-digit numbers together, or a three-digit number and a two-digit number, or something like that? Well, we probably know the basic idea, but again, just to remind ourselves, Seven times three is 21. Three times two is six, plus two is eight. Three times one is three, 381. And now we're going to repeat this process with the two. We'll do all of those, but we'll put the zero there. And why is there a zero there? Well, it's because the two in the tens place is really a 20. So two times seven is really 20 times seven. And that extra zero that is, the 20 instead of the 2, gives you an extra 0 in the product. Then 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 2 times 1 is 2. And now we do a bit of addition. Two thousand nine hundred question. Well, we're doing lattice right now, correct? Is that what you're calling this lattice? Is uh, this what this is? Uh, that's yeah. that's not. I would just. Oh, okay. I don't think it has a name. I just call it the standard multiplication. Okay. Can I can I ask you a question about sure. this? Yeah. Okay. So everything I went to this now, I learned. I just don't know if this is what you're saying. Like this is what we call lattice. Yeah. Is that what that I'm is? going to. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just making sure I would look. Uh, right. Okay. Right. We are not there. Perfect. Okay. I guess I'm behind the curve. I've never actually seen lattice multiplication until I uh, got assigned this course. But this is not lattice multiplication. This is, I don't know if it has a name. It's what I got taught when I was in elementary school. So, the alternative to this is lattice multiplication. So let's say we have, let's present this via example. Say we have a 35 and a 57, and we want to multiply these, whatever, um, 
notes. Keep what's in my notes. 37 and 57, and we want to multiply these together. We're going to create a grid with one of the numbers horizontal and the other numbers vertical. And then we're also going to draw lines diagonally down. And our number, our answer, is going to go in there. And the way this is going to work is that these products are going to give us two-digit numbers. Um, if they gave us a one-digit number, we could, we could write to zero, three, or whatever. But we're going to multiply. We're going to fill in each of these squares one by one, and like Battleship. But, um, those numbers are going to give us what we put in the square. So three times five is 15. And we write that one five. Seven times five is 35. And we write that three five. Three times seven is 21. We write that to one. Seven times seven. Is 49 and we write that. And now we're going to do addition. I mean, we're essentially doing this step. So an addition step. The addition is going to be down the diagonals. So nine plus nothing, there's nothing to add. Nine is nine. Five and four is nine plus one is 10. We carry, I don't quite know what the, where the best place to write this carried number is, but we carry digits just like we do with the standard um, algorithm. Five and two is seven plus three is 10 plus one is 11, then one, there's nothing else to add, except that we carried a one. So there's a two to add, two, one, zero, nine. Um, so this algorithm has its, uh, again, I'm sort of, stepping into uncertain waters because I don't teach in the elementary school, so maybe I shouldn't be talking about pedagogy. But I think this algorithm has its nice points and its best nice points. Um, I think it's maybe harder for a little kid to understand exactly what's happening here. But what's happening here is essentially we've got 37 and we've got 57. And we're looking at the tens and ones. 
of the 30 and the 57 separately. And if you remember foiling <laughs> for quadratics, first outer, inner, last, <laughs> what we're doing is foiling. 30 times 50 is 150. And we've got our tens and our ones and our so on faces are now on the diagonal. So we've got a ones place, a tens place, and so on, a hundreds place, and a thousands place. But it's a little awkward because they don't match up. I mean, this nine is in the ones place. <coughs> This zero is in the tens place. This one is in the hundreds place. This two is in the thousands place. And we get the hundreds place from three and five and two. But three isn't a hundred. Five isn't a hundred. Two isn't a hundred. Well, I, I think I'm wool gathering a little, maybe ramping a bit. That's so how I cut myself off there. But that's that is multiplication. Let's see. Yeah. Anything else I want to say about this? No, I don't think so. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So we've got this sort of um, two multiplication algorithms. I don't know whether one's more in vogue than the other. Um, I know again that, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, this was how everyone learned it, but now things might be different. Okay, and that's a brief lecture, but that's fine. You can do the homework in class instead of taking it home. You see, are you the one who needed? Hey, Or I am sure.